When you're working on a video game, there comes a point in development where you want to, well, have to see how it holds up when people actually play it. It's called playtesting, and let me clear one very important thing up. No matter how convinced you are of your idea, your concept, and your implementation of all of it, you need to playtest. Period. There's just no way around it. Weeks, months, maybe even years of development tend to cloud your judgement, as you'll become so familiar with your own game's intricacies that you'll miss the forest for the trees when you playtest just by yourself. It's like if you ask a fish how it enjoys the water temperature, to which it replies with, what's water? You know, because it's in the water all its life, and in this metaphor you're the three- alright, you get the picture. You might feel like everything plays and feels just the way you picture it, but you'd be surprised at how much you can learn and how much your finished product can and will actually benefit from watching just one person experience your labor of love for the first time. So playtesting is an absolute necessity, and in this video I'm gonna walk you through all the important questions, all the do's and don'ts, all the necessary steps you have to follow. And towards the end, consider it a bonus, I'll also try and give you a few tips on what to do if you want to become a playtester yourself. Sounds like a plan? Good. So without further ado, I'm Ragnar and this is the first episode of my new video series which I call Game Design Focus. Alright, first of all, when we say playtesting, let's clarify what we're actually talking about, because in game development there are different types of player tests that all come with a very own flavor to them. From experience, I usually categorize them into three groups, bug testing, alpha or beta testing, and playtesting. Bug testing means that you have dedicated people, best with a lot of video game experience and nerves of steel, who don't play your game for enjoyment and they also don't try to give you any information on that. But all those guys do, day in, day out, is trying to break your game. And by that, find bugs, glitches, exploits, loopholes, dead ends, crashes, etc, etc. Bug testers are basically bounty hunters for all the loose ends in your program. It's a very tedious job, but it's super helpful to make your final product airtight. And trust me, good bug testers are very hard to come by. Alpha or beta tests are usually done at a later stage of development. Makes sense, when you hit alpha or beta status. These kinds of playtests are usually sent out to hundreds if not thousands of volunteers and you'll want to make sure that you have an efficient automated system that gathers loads and loads of data, which will hopefully help you find big issues a mere handful of testers be unlikely to find. This is especially important for online games, for example to see how the servers can handle a massive amount of players. But in this video, we'll neither focus on bug testing nor on alpha beta testing. We're talking about the good old straightforward playtesting. Mostly a one-on-one -on -one situation or at max a small group of people playing your game at the same time. And the absolute best scenario would be if you're in the same room with them, so you can watch their every reaction, how they interact, how they take up the controls and all that kind of stuff. So let's split this up in three parts what to do before the playtest, during the playtest, and after the playtest. And because it makes sense, we're gonna start with before the playtest. So first question that I often hear or read is, how far should I be into the development to begin with my first playtests? Well, I can't stress the answer to that enough. As early as humanly possible. When you have an idea and decide that you want to make a game, your absolute first goal should be to build a minimum viable product and see how it plays and see how fun it is for other people to do so. I elaborate a bit more on prototyping game ideas in this video. Basically, you'll want to start your tests as soon as your game is playable. I know, you'll feel like it needs a bit more of this and a bit more of that, and... but forget that. Refinement is absolutely not what it's about at this stage. Don't feel ashamed about your early build and get people to play it because you're gonna learn more from just 10 minutes of someone else playing it than you will from 2 months of wrapping your head around what could be better on your own. Alright, then who should you ask to playtest your game? Everybody. And I mean every single person you can get a hold of. Now, it does make sense to have at least a few persons who are somewhat experienced gamers and some that favor the specific genre of your game. So in case you ask friends and family for support, you might be aware of their taste in games, but it still does make a lot of sense to prepare a short questionnaire to hand out, asking questions like, how often do you play video games in a week? 
Name your two favorite genres or games. Name your two least favorite genres or games. What was your first console or game? Or on a scale of 1 to 10, how adept in playing video games and how adept in playing your specific genre would you rate yourself? I've put a link in the description of this video where you'll find a very basic example questionnaire that should help you get a better idea of the person that's testing your game. Because this kind of data helps to give a little context to the results you're getting later. For example, if somebody is playing your puzzle platformer and it's the first time they play a video game since Super Mario came out on the NES, it should be expected that this person needs a long time to get into the controls and mechanics and maybe even get stuck for a long time at some puzzles because they're just not as used to thinking with a video game mindset. But that information, how unexperienced players perform, is super valuable because these unbiased testers can give you an idea where you tutorialize your game right, for example. If you introduce a certain mechanic and this person picks it up without even thinking about it, you've done something right. Whereas if an absolute lover of your genre gets constantly stuck in places you wouldn't expect it, you know with certainty that you've missed out on proper player introduction. Alright, moving on. As I said, the best case scenario is that your tester and yourself are in the same room. But what if that isn't the case and they live on another continent, for example? Now, obviously, you'll have to send a build of your game to them so they can play it on their computer. But you see where this is going, right? Every independent game developer I know hates that part, but we're entering legal territory. It's a hassle and the last thing you want to think about, but you have to. Because as soon as another person has a copy of your game on their computer, even if it's just an early build, they have the potential to cause a lot of damage to you. They could leak it to the internet, which, if you aim to sell the game one day, could impair your Google search results, for example. Imagine that a search of your game's title after release led to ugly prototype screenshots from your early test builds that would ruin a lot of first impressions of potential buyers, and you only get one first impression. Leaking your prototype could also lead to idea theft. This is especially a big thing in the mobile market, where pretty much every successful idea has been stolen from some other poor indie developer with less marketing power behind them. Or douchebag move number one, the person could just go on communities like Desura or Steam Greenlight and claim it to be their own work. In most cases that won't happen, but in such a matter you don't want most cases. You'll want to make absolutely sure that this doesn't happen at all. That's why every single person, and I don't care how good of a friend you consider them, has to sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, in which they assure to delete every copy of the game after the test. I won't go into the specifics of NDAs here, but generally they shouldn't be a big deal for both parties. The tester will ensure that they won't leak your game or confidential information about it without your consent, and in case they violate against that, they'll have to face charges. Now let's say one day, a few weeks after such a playtest, you suddenly find a version of your game online, free to download for everyone. But you have had a dozen testers that received a copy of your game, all signed an NDA in that. But every one of them, of course, tells you that they weren't responsible for the leak. So what now? To avoid such a dilemma, you should just implement some simple countermeasures into the builds you send away, like a hidden key combination that displays a caption of the build number and the name of the tester, something like that. And then of course make sure you don't screw this up, but that'll give you some proof in case something like this happens. But alright, this is all very grim, and as I said, this usually doesn't happen, so let's just hope it won't happen to you, and move on to more interesting stuff. So the goal for your test is to get as much data as possible. We want to see people play your game. But if you just let them, and we're still talking about testers at a remote location, if you still let them play it and give you their thoughts after, they'd probably tell you something completely different than you'd look out for. So just make sure they'll record the playthrough. Give them a screen recording tool like Fraps, Camtasia, Action or OBS, whatever you prefer. And if it's possible for them, let them record an audio track of their comments with a microphone or even with a webcam and make sure they somehow help you sync it with the gameplay. For example, they could do a countdown in the beginning like 3, 2, 1, jump, and on jump, they jump in the game or something. That would give you sort of a let's play of the entire session. Hearing and especially seeing the reactions of players is extremely useful information you want to make sure not to miss out on. Or as an alternative, you could also engage with them in a Skype call during the playthrough. 
Maybe they can even screen share the gameplay at the same time. This way, you can give them some useful hints, make sure they avoid game breakers or something like that. But okay, so much about external playtests. But what if it's the together in a room scenario? Now, I personally find it important to do as much as possible to get the tester in a laid-back mood. To get them as close to playing a game they just picked up on Steam at home as possible. Because that'll give you the most valuable feedback from their playthrough. They don't have to play extra careful, they don't have to impress you with their MLG quickscope skills, and they don't have to try extra hard to break the game. They're just supposed to play exactly like they would if they played it at home. So make it comfy, order pizza, get some drinks, and make sure your testers feel as much at home as possible. Alright, now there's just one more thing I'd like to mention before we begin with the actual testing. See, by definition, your game is, at this stage, not yet finished. So it will contain bugs, crashes, and a lot of the planned content will not be implemented yet. So before you let other people play your game, go through everything yourself and write down what information the player will be missing that they would get in the finished game. Tutorialization, for example. Let's say there are certain mechanics that are already implemented, but your early level design doesn't yet feature the proper explanations. Or if there are certain things that the player can't do yet because it crashes the game, something along that line. Make a list of all the things that you feel need to be explained in order for them to be able to play your game the way you intend it to be played. Sure, you could just do that on the fly, but you'll want to minimize communication with the tester during the playthrough as much as possible. Make sure you know what to tell the player beforehand and when to intervene with guidance during the playthrough. The reasons for that? Well, that already belongs in the next part, during the playtest. And since this video has already gotten three times as long as I intended it to be, you know what, let's make this a two-parter. This time, we talked about different types of playtests and how to prepare for a traditional one-on-one -on -one or one-to-few playtest. And next time, we're gonna cover everything during and after the playtest, as well as those promised tips on how to become a playtester yourself. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something useful. If so, then please give it a like, subscribe for more videos in the future, follow me on Facebook for news and updates, and consider joining my Patreon if you'd like to support the show. My name is Ragnar, and I'll see you guys next time on Ragnaroks.